Good morning, everyone, and welcome to yet another session of Informatica Cloud Tech Tuesdays. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that's very relevant to the cloud world. That is the topic of REST APIs. However, in this specific topic, we're going to be exploring why REST APIs are especially beneficial with a cloud integration solution. Today, we have with us Amal Dongre from our Informatic Cloud Engineering. And Amal has really been with us at Informatica for over 12 years. And he was with the Informatica Cloud Business Unit when it first started about half a decade ago, uh, involved the very first few iterations of the product. Today, he focuses on improving our REST API experience as well as our cloud integration templates. So we're very happy to have him today. So what we're going to be exploring in today's agenda are, first of all, the basic standard principles of REST APIs and what in exactly they entail. After that, we're going to be going into Informatica Cloud's REST APIs and going into how uh, those specific APIs are structured, what resources you have access to, and as well as what kind of response codes you get. After that, Amal will be going into a demo where we'll be looking into embedding integration into your SaaS application, be it a force.com application or a Java application using our REST API. So you'll actually be able to see what kind of resources are available to you and how you can embed them natively. He'll also be going into how you can use an external scheduler or a monitoring tool uh, and in conjunction with the REST API. Uh, and get even more out of your cloud integration solution. And we'll be b briefly talking about how you can administer new users as well. And then we're going to have a summary of the session. And we're going to have some questions and answers and also talk about the next Tech Tuesday session. So let's go over some of the standard principles within our REST APIs. So if you look at any REST API, you have a base URI and you have several resources that are available to you uh, based on whatever the cloud application provider uh, provides you with. And those resources are basically applied against a set of requests that uh, you, the user, can initiate. Some of the most uh, famous requests and more, most familiar ones are those of the get, put, post, and delete requests. And based on the request that you serve up, for the specific resource that's been made available to you, you'll get a response code uh, from the service. Generally, anything in the 100 range is based on information. Anything in the 200 range is based on a, the success of a request. 300 basically redirects you uh, to another service. The 400 range is based on uh, any client errors. And the 500 range is based on errors of the service itself. Now, how does that apply with Informatica Cloud's REST APIs in the concept of integration? So there's several resources available to you from the integration activities to the details of a secure agent. So for those of you that are not familiar with Informatica Cloud yet, the secure agent is essentially a runtime engine that executes all your integration workflows. And it's a lightweight agent and um, does not take up much room on your CPU. So the secure agent details is a very important piece of information to get when you're running uh, integrations from a third-party scheduler. You can also find out information about every single integration job, uh, logins with regards to different users, and if you want to run custom integration templates for custom integration processes, you can do so via the REST API. Furthermore, you can also get details about various integration workflows, as well as different task flows and schedules that you've set up for a particular integration task. And generally, the requests that we use with an Informatic Cloud are the get, post, and delete requests for our REST API. And the response that we uh, give out back, generally if it's successful for the get and post commands, uh, you return the, it returns the list of requested objects that you desire, and anything that's a failure returns a 403 error. So let's look at how the header configuration looks 
with Informatica Cloud's REST API. Now, Informatica Cloud basically revved our REST API last summer, so we're now into version 2 of our REST API, and that is the version which we will be iterating upon. So, typically, this is what the header configuration looks like. There's the standard method in front, which is your get, post, or delete. Uh, and then, essentially, you'll be using a server URL practically for all the resources that's available to you. The content type uh, essentially reads the request as either, either JSON or XML, and the default is JSON. Uh, the accept portion is optional. It's just a format that you want your response in. And the IC session ID is required for accessing most of the other resources that are available to you. So with that, I'm now going to transfer control over to Amal Dongre, who's going to go into a demo of the Informatica Cloud uh, REST API. Hi, everybody. So, uh, as Ashwin illustrated, we can uh, we can first take a quick look at a couple of illustrations on where we have used the Informatica REST API, and then we can take a look at a few of these resources or URLs or commands that are available with Informatica Cloud. Now, uh, you should see on your screen an application that's currently running on force.com. And this application internally uses Informatica REST API um, to, to invoke tasks on Informatica Cloud, run those and, and monitor those and get the, the job status information and so on. So let me quickly illustrate you that application. Uh, in this first section here on the login, I'm using my Informatica Cloud account to log in to Informatica Cloud. And uh, this will return a session ID. This was the IC session ID described by Ashwin earlier. And uh, with this, we get a set of Salesforce connections and a set of fact file connections here. And uh, there is a filter condition you can configure. Let me just put some old value there. Now, what we are doing here is this particular use case is not very complicated. It's a very it's a very simple use case that we are just using to illustrate how you could synchronize an object from Salesforce to a flat file. Now this could be a flat file. It could be any relational database or anything else that is supported on Informatica Cloud, like SaaS applications and so on. But for simplicity, we are just using a flat file as a target now. You can also see that there are some objects you could select from account, contact, and opportunity. And then there is a field map control provided here on which you could drag and drop objects, uh, sorry, field names from the source to the target. So if you have used the Informatica Cloud UI before, this will look very simple, uh, very similar to what is available today on Informatica Cloud. The, so the benefit here is that you are able to do all of this into your own environment or, or an application of your choice using our API. So whatever we are configuring here, there are Informatica Cloud REST API calls being executed on the back end. And in fact, on this white label application uh, at the bottom, it will show you the calls you are making on the, on the request side here, and also the response that Informatica Cloud provides you back. So this application, we, uh, it's available. We can share it with anybody who is interested. And uh, this lets you understand how to configure typical resources for uh, Informatica Cloud REST API and use them. So now I'll, I'll just run this to continue with the example. So what I have done so far is I logged on to Informatica Cloud using the login resource. And uh, then I got the session ID and got the connections. I was able to distinguish between the Salesforce connections and the flat file connections here using the connection type. And now with this field map, I'll create a task for a custom integration template that I already had on my cloud account. Now, and so this will create the task and run the task as well. What it will do along with that is while it is running, it's going to keep monitoring the task. So let me go to my cloud account and where we can see the let me go to the right one. If you see here, you will see a task running here. So this, this was the task that was created just now through the 
white label UI. And while the task is still running, this is going to keep monitoring it. And when it is done, it will return the status, the success rows 13 and so on. All of this is available here, how we achieved that. So individual API calls and the responses given back by the API, by the REST API layer of Informatica Cloud. So this is just one example of how you could configure applications or user interactions on your environment, an application of your choice or, or an environment of your choice and have Informatica artifacts behind the scenes to accomplish your job. So this was a Salesforce example. We also have an equivalent Java example. Now in this case, this is actually a utility. Uh, we already have this available on our community and our marketplace where you can use this command line utility to run an Informatica Cloud task or a job and wait while it is running. So let me just run this. Um, so this internally invokes, as you can see, a jar file and it passes on some arguments to it, the ID of the task, the name of the task and so on. And what it will do is I'm going to another account where I'm running this. While this job is running, it will keep monitoring it. It will keep looking for it. Let me do this, yeah. And when it is done, it will return back the status of the job. And at the end, you will see that echo zero. Uh, this is happening because the batch file has been configured like that, but you could, you could configure it the way you prefer. So this is an MS-DOS batch file. You could have a unique shell file that, that does the same. And there is an error level returned back here. The, the benefit of this is uh, you could invoke this from any environment from where you want to run jobs. So many of your, our customers actually configure this with their, their scheduler of their choice in their organization. So this is a very good interface for a third party scheduler utility to, jo to run Informatica jobs, to schedule and run Informatica jobs. We could quickly take a look at some of these URLs, how, um, how these resources are configured. Now in this case, the URL is an activity, activity log URL and we are limiting the entries to last five because typically we don't expect people to run more than these uh, in, in a scheduled way. So this, uh, in this call, we set up some of the header and body properties that this is a this is a get request this the content type we expect is application json the the char set is utf8 and we have also configured a session id that we had obtained before in this code and then we run through these run through the response the json response to get the details we want and that's how you can actually get the status back for the job that you have run now in this case we actually invoke the login command somewhere before, the login call somewhere before. Let me just quickly run through there. Yeah. So here we have invoked the login call and this is a simple code where I just get the get the session ID back from the login response and set it up here for the rest of the calls. We also use something called as a server URL and uh, let me quickly illustrate you that through this environment. So this is the risk client tool that's that's freely available on the web. And what we can do is let me invoke quickly a couple of commands to show you how typical commands are invoked in uh, in Informatica REST API. Now in this case, this is uh, a different environment which I access internally, and I this is how I found my login body. So all it needs is login, username, and password. You can get more of these details on uh, our Informatica Cloud Developer Guide that describes each of these commands in detail. But for now, we can just take a look at a couple of them. So this is my login body. The header just mentions that the request I'm passing on is a JSON request and with UTF-8. The method is post. So when I do this, it will log on to Informatica Cloud using this account. And in the response body, you will see at the end that there is a session ID given back. And there is also a server URL just before that. So the idea is to use this server URL for all your subsequent calls in that same session and also the session ID. So what I will need to do is I will copy this session ID and let me run a couple more calls from here. So activity log is one more that we can invoke from here. Now all I need to do is replace the session ID that I had saved in my previous call when I saved it with the newly obtained session ID and the URL here is the activity log. 
in my case i have not changed the server url because it's the same for me that i used before and i'll run this and this will return the activity log and now the response is also a json response so you will see a pair of values a, a label and a value pair that shows all the jobs that i recently ran on it uh, so if i go to informatica cloud this will show me these two entries for drs underscore catalog underscore one and then this cit underscore drs2 and so on and you can see all of those in the same order here so this is how you can obtain activity log you could also use something similar to get a list of connections for example for this account i'll need to again replace the for each of these requests i just need to replace the session id with the latest one and that's how you can do it so this is um, an illustration of how you can get objects there are various illustrations of how you could post objects or delete objects and so on so we looked at uh, two types of uh, api calls so far the ones that we used to create jobs and run those and monitor those and the other one is where we interact with other some of these other objects like connections agents and so on there is a third category of calls which we can use to set up an account so that that includes registration of an of a sub organization or uh, creation of a user and so on so let me go to another instance where i have that kind of access so i am invoking another login command here now with the with the public url and i'll do this i'll do something similar here i'll save the session id i got from there my server url is not different from my login url so i'll just keep that the same but in may for many of our customers or uh, many of our users the server url might be different so it's always a good idea to use the server url now i let me look at this register request now this using this you can you can register you can create sub orgs uh, uh, the site admin or or the admin for for any customer can create sub orgs using this register api call and create more users for each of those orgs and so on so that way you can create or you can delegate your administration uh, to somebody else for those orgs and so on so let me do this let me set the session id for this call as well as you can see here in the registration there is user information where i am specifying the name of the user the email id and so on and then there is a sub org that i create so when i run this it will register this user and create a sub org under under my my major main org so i can go to admin console here and if i see sub orgs i'll see this org created so this is the third type so just like this there is a there is a url or there is a resource to create a user using this you can create a new user under your org and so on so that's the third category of request that you can work with so just to quickly run through the summary the one type is where a delegated administrator can create create users register orgs and so on the second type is where you can create or get various types of objects on informatica cloud and the third one is where you can create a task and run and monitor it while it is running and so on so this summarizes the types of apis we have and the way you can invoke or consume these apis we have many more details on our community and marketplace sites and uh, ashwin can point you also to some of the resources available on the web great thanks amol if you could uh, pass control back yeah. to me okay so uh thanks for the demo amol and we're now going to just summarize some of the things we learned so essentially when you're constructing the request um you can do it in json or xml um you can feel free to specify the format of the request and response in the header itself so see earlier on you had the choice of you know uh, choosing the format uh, as i'm all demonstrated always make sure that you use the session id for any of the subsequent rest calls that you make into the informatica cloud service and after you use the base url for that login call you will receive a server url to be used for all the other calls and you can actually find more documentation uh, of this within your uh, informatica community sites so 
If you go to this particular URL, you'll be able to see more documentation on our REST API. So with that, we have now come to our Q&A session, so feel free to go ahead and um, essentially type in your questions uh, in the chat panel below. The first one we have is something about embedding Java. So Amal, uh, you showed the nativeforce.com application, how it can yeah. be embedded, and you did show some of the Java code now, is it possible for a full-fledged Java uh, application to also embed it just like you did with a force.com application? Yes, that's correct. And uh, so the other illustration I showed was actually a Java utility, a client-side Java utility that, that does this. But the uh, answer to that question is yes. You could embed these calls in any application or any language or any environment that supports calling REST-based APIs. Okay, the next question is something about using someone's own uh, integration application and to create any integration task from scratch. Now, so if you do have your own integration application, would you be able to uh, do that? Yes. So uh, typically, we would expect people to create custom integration tasks. So if you're familiar with Informatica Cloud, there are standard tasks available for uh, users like data synchronization, data replication, and so on. And there is a custom task, custom integration task that you can create through templates. So if you work on the custom integration, there is more API support available for those. You can create those tasks using the API from your code uh, for custom integration. And for data synchronization, data replication, and so on, you can run those, but you cannot create those. OK, great. Um, there's a question about uh, XML or JSON. So you know, we users have the ability to specify uh, their requests and their responses in XML or JSON. I know our default is uh, JSON. Is, is there something you can guide our folks on whether they should be using XML or JSON? Uh, I think uh, it's it's up to the user's choice. We do recommend JSON because personally I have found it very simple to use JSON from any environment, from force.com or Java. But uh, we do support XML as well. Uh, so the short answer is, yeah, we recommend JSON, but feel free to use anything that you prefer. OK, great. Um, as far as schema, now, can users use the REST API in order to access uh, any sort of data schema? Yes. So uh, we have uh, a, a, a resource called connection. And that connection resource provides you a lot more options, a lot of options um, that you can use to not only get or create a connection, but also interrogate a connection. You can get a list of resources or a list of tables or objects from that connection and also even the field level details. So today I can point my connection to an Oracle source or a Salesforce or NetSuite instance, get all the objects that are available to that account on that, and also the individual fields, their properties, and all of that. So uh, a lot of details about the schema can be gotten using the REST API. OK, great. Uh, one of our customers um, essentially is using custom integration templates. And they would like to know whether you can import templates to uh, import templates via the REST API. Yes, absolutely. So you would have to create the templates using the template creation tool that we have today. But once you have the template published as an XML, you can import that using the REST API. So importing on cloud, the, some action that is similar to going to Informatica Cloud UI the configuration and creating a new template on cloud. It's, it's possible through the API. OK, great. I do see a couple more questions in the chat panel, folks, but we'll get back to you individually since we are a little bit over time. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, joining today's call. Just uh, some next steps. So as far as next steps, uh, please go to the community site I outlined earlier to understand the REST API documentation 
uh, in full. And uh, please remember that it is v2 of our REST API that we'll be iterating on. Um, also, if you do join the Informatica Cloud community, you'll find more information on not only the REST API, but other aspects of Informatica Cloud. And uh, finally, next uh, Tech Tuesdays is actually going to be on web services, uh, specifically SOAP-based web services. So we hope to see you then. Thanks, everybody, for attending this uh, Tuesday's Tech Tuesday. See you next week.